Dick Cheney, Bill Clinton, Chris Christie, what do they and the other politicians on this list have in common? It comes down to one word, arrogance. Stay tuned as we examine the most arrogant politicians ever. Richard Bruce Cheney served as President George H.W. Bush's Secretary of Defense. He was also George W. Bush's vice president during his two-term presidency. So you would think he'd have earned his stripes as a Bush family confidant and buddy. In reality, the elder Bush believed Cheney had a bit too much power in his son's administration. Speaking with John Meacham for Destiny and Power, the American odyssey of George Herbert Walker Bush, Bush Sr. described Dick Cheney's behavior, saying, his seeming knuckling under to the real hard-charging guys who want to fight about everything, use force to get our way in the Middle East. He also told Meacham that the former VP, quote, became very hardline and very different from the Dick Cheney I knew and worked with. Bush Sr. did call Cheney a good man, but did believe his son second-in-command, quote, had his own empire in the administration. Cheney spoke on this himself to Fox News, saying, I think a lot of people believed then and still believe to this day that I was aggressive in defending and carrying out what I thought were the right policies. Meanwhile, CBS News described Cheney as arrogance personified and claimed that along with hubris, the trademarks of his vice presidency were secrecy and imperiousness. The outlet further alleged the career politician used his position of power to fill his personal coffers. Rudy Giuliani was viewed as a figurative Batman back in the day. The New York mayor cleaned up the mean streets of the city with his zero-tolerance policy on crime and other tactics, many of which could be considered highly problematic. Giuliani was hailed as a national hero for his response to 9-11, and despite proving to be a polarizing figure for Republicans, he was even considered to be a viable future GOP presidential candidate, but then started his fall from grace. In 2000, Giuliani attempted to go head-to-head -head with Hillary Clinton before abandoning his sinking senatorship campaign. Eight years later, he took a shot at becoming the Republican presidential nominee. He failed miserably, with the New York Post reporting that he finished last in the field of candidates. They went on to write, But as in all tragedies, a hero's greatest strengths turn and become his greatest weaknesses. Giuliani's arrogance and refusal to conform have undone his presidential ambitions. Esquire was less diplomatic, citing, among other things, his quote, icy insincerity, ghoulish smile, and noting that, behind his back, people compare him to Mussolini. They went on to claim he's, quote, a megalomaniac, a despot, a monster. All traits that made for a faultless fit to be Donald Trump's sidekick. An observation that wasn't missed by The New Yorker, who wrote, the former mayor's theatrical, combative style of politics anticipated and perfectly aligns with the president's. According to The Hill, Donald Trump once called Karl Rove a, quote, pompous fool. Intelligencer wrote he was once the poster boy for state-of-the-art and Republican evil. Rove's also been dubbed a liar, with Truthout.org writing that his autobiography, Courage and Consequences, My Life as a Conservative in the Fight, was, quote, a pastiche of lies designed to rehabilitate the record of the Bush-Cheney years. While working in the White House, Rove evidently believed George W. Bush was the 2000s version of William McKinley, and he the next Mark Hanna, a top advisor to the 25th president. But as Politico put it, Rove fails where his hero succeeded. The Atlantic shared a similar sentiment, writing, Modeling his boss on McKinley, in other words, seems more like a consequence of Rove's ego than of any kind of sound political instincts. Rove's feelings about another president, however, are significantly less respectful. According to ABC in 2008, Rove sniped, Barack Obama is the guy at the country club with a beautiful date, holding a martini and a cigarette that stands against the wall and makes snide comments about everyone. The media was quick to analyze the alleged underlying subtext, with HuffPost writing, Karl Rove says Barack Obama is arrogant. Arrogant, of course, is a euphemism. In the monochromatic bunkers from which old schoolers cling to power, the true word they use is uppity when hurled at blacks. Meanwhile, Rove later doubled down on his remarks during an interview with Bill O'Reilly. 
John Edwards was once touted as being the new Bobby Kennedy, with Newsweek writing in 2007, he's a smart politician who knows the value of modesty. When asked about Robert F. Kennedy, he says simply, I don't deserve to be compared to him. Edwards ran on the VP ticket during John Kerry's 2004 presidential battle against George W. Bush. In 2008, he campaigned to be the presidential candidate, but was ultimately beaten out by Barack Obama. Only a few years later, outlets like Reuters would chronicle the collapse of his once-promising political career. Edwards' liberal cred was seriously dented following a Washington Post interview with his hairstylist, who revealed Edwards paid up to $500 for a haircut and once even splashed out $1,250 to fly the stylist to Atlanta to snip his auburn locks. But the real kicker came post-campaign. Edwards had an affair with staffer Riel Hunter, resulting in a baby, while his wife was terminally ill. Edwards lied about it and even paid another staffer to pretend the child was theirs. The National Enquirer broke the affair story in 2006, but according to Politico, it flew under the radar until August 2008. However, Edwards' fall from grace wasn't over yet. Per CBS, he faced a possible prison sentence over claims he'd used his campaign fund to funnel $1 million in secret donations to help cover up his affair. All charges were eventually dropped. When Ted Cruz ran against Donald Trump for the Republican presidential nomination in 2016, Business Insider dubbed their mudslinging power battle, quote, one of the dirtiest in recent memory. While Cruz refused to endorse Trump following the latter's win, the senator from Texas did a 180, cozying up to Trump to further his political ambitions. Donald Trump will not be the nominee. In 2020, Donald Trump will be overwhelmingly re-elected as President of the United States." According to the Intelligencer, everyone in Congress hates Ted Cruz. The politician persistently makes decisions to benefit himself and, quote, puts what's good for him ahead of what's good for the GOP. His old Princeton pals appear to hate him, too as their descriptions of him weren't exactly glowing. A former Bush aide told Mother Jones that Cruz is, quote, hyper-arrogant and widely despised. Cruz's behavior came under fire in a big way in February 2021. According to CNN, while his home state suffered a devastating historic winter storm that left millions of people without electricity and water, Cruz jetted off to tropical and toasty warm Cancun, and he would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those pesky passengers with cell phone cameras. Cruz was quick to joke about it and more or less placed the blame on his kids. Joe Manchin became U.S. Senator for West Virginia in 2010, and for a hot minute, he looked like an okay guy, albeit a multimillionaire and a tad polished. The Atlantic wrote about Manchin, saying, Manchin has skillfully managed his image to stay viable in a state that went from a Democratic to a Republican majority. The publication went on to posit Manchin voted for what he believed would further his career, rather than what was best for constituents and his political party's aims and ideology. That could well explain why Manchin vetoed the Build Back Better Act at the very last minute in 2021. The bill would have majorly benefited West Virginians living below the poverty line, expanding Medicare coverage for the elderly and needy, and childcare provisions for poor and struggling working families. However, according to HuffPost, Manchin reportedly confessed that, quote, he thought parents would waste monthly child tax credit payments on drugs instead of providing for their children. Not surprisingly, Democrats were furious over Manchin's bombshell dismissal, and Bernie Sanders ripped into him during an interview with Rachel Maddow. We have people like Mr. Manchin turning their backs on the working families of this country, allowing the big money interest once again to prevail. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell was called one of the most influential people in the world by time in both 2015 and 2019. He's also been called, quote, a nasty, arrogant man with the mindset and beliefs of a 19th century plantation owner by the New Jersey Globe. Or, as Washington Monthly once wrote, McConnell defines arrogance. That's not to say he doesn't have anyone in his corner. 
As former Speaker of the House John Boehner complimented the Kentucky Senator in his 2015 time listing. However, Embedded podcast host Kelly McEvers, who, along with her team, reported on McConnell for months, claims the career politician places his own goals and thirst for power over the public's well-being. McEvers told NPR, His critics would say that this means, you know, he's less concerned about specific policies or signature pieces of legislation, but rather tactics that will keep him in power. And according to Vox, McConnell's love for the Constitution was nowhere to be seen when he threatened corporations they would face, quote, "...serious consequences if they publicly opposed Republican ideologies." Bill Clinton, Andrew Johnson, and Donald Trump are the only presidents to have been impeached in U.S. history. According to Time, Clinton's impeachment followed repeated lies about his affair with White House intern Monica Lewinsky under oath, leading to a charge of perjury, in addition to obstruction of justice for allegedly persuading staffers to cover up the affair. The 49-year-old POTUS portrayed the 22-year-old as an emotionally unstable fantasist. Lewinsky's career and personal life were left in tatters. She became a national punchline. But as for Clinton, all charges were dropped and it was business as usual for the former president. In a piece titled The Incredible Arrogance of Bill Clinton, The Atlantic claimed, Clinton carries the sense of having been perpetually wronged. The game is only fair when he wins. According to Salon, Clinton has been embroiled in multiple scandals and sleazy dealings, with the publication writing, "...a large share of Bill Clinton's post-presidency speaking gigs were for special interests that benefited greatly from his administration's policies, e.g. Wall Street and deregulation, or special interests that stood to benefit from Hillary's current or future political power." Chris Christie happens to be such a beach buff, he even broke his own orders to enjoy a Sandy sabbatical. As NJ.com reported, the New Jersey governor got caught on camera relaxing on a beach that he'd ordered to be closed during a budget beef in 2017. Christie's approval ratings were already at an all-time low even before his shoreline shenanigans. His blatant disregard for adhering to rules he imposed on others did little to help his cause. According to the Monmouth University Polling Institute, two-thirds of the Garden State's constituents polled disapproved of his beach trip. The Institute's director went on to say in a statement, "...it really is difficult to drive approval ratings into the single digits barring something like a criminal conviction. However, you have to admire Christie's seeming tenacity for trying to get his numbers down to that level." The Federalist predicted Beachgate would spell the end for Christie, and sure enough, he was voted out of office in 2018. Much has been made of Paul Ryan's admiration for Ayn Rand. He's even said the libertarian's work is what sparked his interest in politics. Though he downplayed his fandom to the National Review in 2012, one might say some of his work in public office aligns with Rand's anti-altruism. According to OnTheIssues.org, while Ryan was the House representative for Wisconsin's 1st District, he consistently voted no on legislation aimed at helping poor and working-class citizens. He voted yes on any bills benefiting corporations, banks, and the rich. Salon.com didn't hold back when it came to Ryan. They called the now former Speaker of the House, quote, "...an arrogant clown drunk on years of flatterers lying about how smart he is." They claimed the GOP representative, quote, "...thinks he's a Randian hero but is quickly learning that even conservatives find his arrogance revolting." In 2018, as it became apparent Ryan would very likely lose his congressional seat, he announced he was retiring. The career politician may have saved face by dropping out before being voted out, but any hopes of saving his reputation or salvaging any integrity were long gone. As The Intelligencer wrote, Ryan leaves his endangered majority convinced he has done his job well. It is a triumph of his own propaganda that so few people believe he is actually sincere about this. A beauty queen who was once crowned Miss Wasilla, Miss Congeniality, and placed second in 1984's Miss Alaska, Sarah Palin is renowned for being fiercely competitive and loves hunting and fishing, according to Time. However, Palin's public facade soon slipped after becoming John McCain's running mate in the 2008 presidential election. According to The Atlantic, Palin started on a high with a rousing speech that made her, quote, the star of national politics. 
She railed against government corruption and accused Barack Obama of mocking working people for their love of guns and religion, with HuffPost writing in 2010, At first blush, she came across as a Christian family values no-nonsense conservative. Then, the press started poking around and found delightful amounts of nonsense in Sarah's closets. One of multiple examples, Palin long preached about the sanctity of marriage, all while she and her husband battled rumors of cheating, which they both vehemently denied. The couple announced their divorce in 2019. After Palin gave one of her many speeches in 2008, HuffPost remarked, "...but there's another kind of arrogance, perhaps harder to spot at first." An arrogance that apparently doesn't even recognize itself as such. A sanctified, self-satisfied presumptuousness that flows from sheer naivete about oneself and the world, and manifests itself in giddy ambition. While he was the governor of the Big Apple, Andrew Cuomo was renowned for being driven, ambitious, and occasionally brutish. As Politico wrote about him, he was a smart, shrewd, and persevering figure who could be short-tempered to the point of abusive. But then, Cuomo's battle with Donald Trump over COVID made him a hero to many. Ellen DeGeneres even took the time to ask him during an interview about people using the term Cuomo-sexuals in reference to being attracted to the former governor. To which he replied, I think that's a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. However, the love affair ended abruptly. New Yorkers became exasperated at Cuomo's ever-changing and seemingly nonsensical COVID mandates. Cuomo's fall from grace began as news broke of his many cover-ups, deceptions, and lies, with the New York Post writing in March 2021, "...as each new bit of misconduct is revealed, more legislators turn against him. Resulting headlines then lead more New Yorkers to turn on him in disgust." Then came the tidal wave of sexual misconduct allegations. The New York Times columnist Brett Stevens wrote, Cuomo needs to go immediately. What I find somewhat amazing is that more New Yorkers didn't recognize sooner what a repulsive, repellent, repugnant, revolting, retrograde, rebarbative, reprobative reptile they had in the governor's office. Just months after the New York Post called him arrogant, the governor resigned on August 10, 2021. According to Rand Paul's website, he's a hardworking and dedicated physician, not a career politician. However, some doctors would beg to differ, including the chief medical advisor to both Donald Trump and Joe Biden, Anthony Fauci, who has been duking it out with Rand Paul since COVID hit the U.S. Paul's relationship with Trump has grown ever tighter as he continues to echo the former president's pandemic rhetoric. Paul refuses to wear a mask, insisting he's now immune from the virus as he contracted COVID in 2020. He tweeted in May of that year, "...the fake news can't stand that some people might not need to submit to the new authoritarianism of the left because they are immune to coronavirus. Modern science disagrees." The WHO, CDC, Harvard Health Institute, and Johns Hopkins University, among others, disagree with his immunity claims. Not surprisingly, so does Dr. Fauci. According to Vanity Fair, Fauci, quote, "...basically called Rand Paul a shameless moron to his face during his congressional testimony in September 2020." Then, in another exchange amid August 2021 Senate hearing, Fauci seemingly reached his breaking point with Paul. "...Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about, quite frankly, and I want to say that officially. You do not know what you are talking about." While going in on Donald J. Trump at a May 2016 campaign rally, Ted Cruz mentioned the writer of Back to the Future 2 said the Biff character was modeled after his opponent, a quote, "...caricature of a braggadocious, arrogant buffoon." A few months later, Trump won the election, and according to the Washington Post, would go on to make over 20,000 false or misleading claims during his time in office. Some of his inaccurate claims happen to be about the coronavirus, and when Trump contracted COVID, the reaction across the board was not the most sympathetic, to put it mildly. A USA Today op-ed columnist wrote, "...his own arrogant negligence gave him COVID-19. I reserve my compassion for others who died. Healthcare workers, my sister's best friend, 
people in empty hospital rooms saying goodbyes on an iPad. In an attempt to analyze Trump's mind, The Atlantic turned to a professional, Dan P. McAdams, professor of psychology at Northwestern University, noted Trump's, quote, "...narcissism, disagreeableness, and grandiosity." He scored Trump as near rock bottom on the agreeableness scale, explaining, "...people low in agreeableness are described as callous, rude, arrogant, and lacking in empathy. If Donald Trump does not score low on this personality dimension, then probably Probably nobody does. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite arrogant politicians are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.